Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and I just finished building the last canoe in the triple nesting canoe set that I've been working on here this spring. Now, if you're not familiar with my nesting canoes or my skin on frame canoe building system in general, make sure you go back and watch the first video in this series first, because I talk a lot about the overall design history and the construction method of this particular type of canoe. Just gonna make everything in this video make a lot more sense. So starting with the latest canoe here, actually, I'll just go ahead and recap the whole series of canoes. Basically, my design project for this spring was to really elevate the design on our full-size solo canoes. I felt like our pack canoes were pretty solid after a couple years of design evolution, and at the end of last year, I felt like I was really getting close to what I wanted for at least my full-size solo canoes, and then edging my way into tandem canoes as well. So starting this spring, based on what I learned last year, I built just a straight ahead, medium-sized solo canoe. It was 30 inches wide by 14 foot, eight inches long. Good, you know, standard medium-sized solo canoe. Now, next canoe that I built was a 28 inch wide by 13 foot, eight inch canoe that would fit inside of that canoe. And that one would be a good double paddle canoe for a larger paddler or a good single blade canoe for a smaller paddler. Now, the final canoe that I just finished building was 32 inches wide by 15 foot six, and it fits over the other two canoes. And that one is a good solo canoe for a very large paddler, or just a nice tandem canoe for a couple of smaller paddlers, or even a nice tandem canoe for a couple of experienced medium-sized paddlers that are willing to trade a little bit of stability and cargo carrying capacity for just an overall quicker and much more light and compact package. So that is the triple nesting canoe set. They all fit inside of each other really well. They all transport on top of one small vehicle, which is awesome. And I was going to just bring the largest canoe into the shop here today and just go over all the details of that, but I realized that that's kind of repetitive. Really everything you need to know about that canoe is everything that I just told you. So I think what would be more interesting here is I want to actually take you guys on a tour of all the design upgrades and all the modifications that are going into this latest batch of canoes here. Uh, these canoes can be paddled, but they can also be sailed with a really simple pop-up sail that doesn't interfere with the paddling function and also isn't difficult or complex to set up or take down. And the latest thing that I'm adding to that is a rowing rig that bolts right on top of the gunnels. And this is something I've wanted to do ever since I started this project about three years ago, but I knew that I needed to get the full-size canoes up to a certain design threshold before I could focus on it. Now, another versatility that I have for these boats is that they can be catamaran together. And if you watched the last videos, you've already seen the system for catamaraning them together, but recently I decided to take a left turn on that and try a new system, which I'll show you here in a few minutes, that is slightly less positive, but a lot easier to set up, just to give my students just one more option for how to set that up here. So I think what I wanna do here is I just went ahead and brought the medium-sized boat here into the studio. I've got it strapped down to my sawhorses exactly the same way it would be strapped down on top of my car. And I think it would be fun, rather than just listening to me blab on for any longer, to take you guys on an imaginary canoeing trip in the studio here. So we've just rolled up to our imaginary put-in with our imaginary sawhorse car here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the straps off. Now, anytime you're strapping down a kayak or a canoe on top of a car, you always want to run the strap behind the pillar. You never wanna strap a boat down like this because if it shifts, this can pop off and then bad things can happen. Now, I don't actually have the smaller canoe in the studio right now, but generally this would be nested over the smaller canoe which fits inside of it. I usually take these off the vehicle one at a time. Now, this being my medium size standard layup canoe, it weighs about 31 pounds, which is pretty easy to take off the vehicle. This particular layup is gonna be about as strong as a good carbon or Kevlar canoe, but if you wanted to, you could always build it heavier and it would be more durable, or you could make it lighter and it would be less durable. So let's just go ahead and set this thing up for a quick evening paddle, and then I'll show you the rowing setup next. So first thing in the canoe is my pad, and this is gonna protect the ribs, and it's also gonna give me something to kneel on. I'm gonna put my paddle in here, obviously, throw my PFD in, 
I've usually got some type of a bag with water or whatever I want for the afternoon. If I'm in any kind of rougher water, this is probably gonna be a dry bag. And the nice thing about the exposed ribs here is they give you lots of attachment points to where you can bungee or tie things in. So if you do accidentally capsize, you don't end up with a yard sale all over the place. So next thing is the seat here. Now in the smaller nesting canoe, the seat usually stays permanently installed, but because this has to fit over that canoe on the car, we take the seat out each time. So the seat that I've been really stoked on lately for my solo canoes is this curved laminated seat from North Star Canoes. It's really comfortable, it's really strong, and it's not that expensive considering how well made it is. So to put this thing in, I'm just gonna go ahead and flex the boat open a little bit. And something I've been doing lately that makes this a lot easier to install is I've been putting T-nuts into the bottom of the seat so I don't have to hold the nut and the bolt while I'm trying to put this in. I just push it down through the hole like this. And I can either thread this in with a hand driver or if I'm close to my vehicle, I'll just get a power driver like this. And that's all I gotta do to put that in. Let's go ahead and do this to the other ones here real quick. I've been doing this for a while now and I've been paranoid that I'm gonna cross thread these, but so far it hasn't happened, so. I think if I was on a wilderness trip, I would also bring some extra regular washers and regular nuts just in case I damaged one of these T-nuts while I was putting the seat in or out. And last thing we're gonna put in is the sail. So the sail rigs for these canoes are something I am super proud of. This is just a really simple crosswind slash downwind sprit sail, tucks nice and tight out of the way unless you actually wanna go sailing. This is my most recent version of this sail. It's made of ripstop nylon. It's got a carbon fiber mast. It weighs one pound, 11 ounces. So this isn't in the plans right now, but after I test it here for a couple months and I'm sure it's not gonna break, I'll make sure I put this sail in there as well. So whole thing shows up, it's tied up with one ball bungee here. First thing I'm gonna do is just take this off and put it around this rib back here. And then I'm gonna take my mast and slide it over the pivot point up here. And I'm gonna take the halyard and I'm gonna feed it through this pad eye and back to this clam cleat right here. And then finally, I'm just gonna take that ball bungee that I put around the rib right here. I'm gonna wrap it around the sail so it's gathered nice and tight out of the way here where it's not gonna interfere unless you actually wanna use it. I'm gonna go ahead and coil up the sheet really quick. You always wanna do this so it doesn't present an entanglement hazard. And I'm just gonna tuck this underneath that same bungee. So super simple, super quick, and we're basically ready to go canoeing. So before we go on our imaginary canoeing trip here, let's just find out how much all of this stuff weighs together. So I've got my sail, my paddle, my seat mat, my PFD, and my seat and the boat. Go ahead and put the scale down here. We'll see how much I weigh. Looks like I weigh 162 pounds right now. Go ahead and step off that. I'm gonna step back on. I'm gonna pick up the canoe. And we are at 201, 202. So a little bit under 40 pounds, which is still pretty awesome for me being able to carry this down to the water. So I'm just gonna hop in the canoe here. I'll put on my PFD, make sure the bottom strap is nice and tight as usual. And we are ready to go canoeing. Now, there's nothing really inherently different about using this type of a canoe as using any other solo canoe. The only thing that's a little bit different is that some solo canoes are gonna have a lot more tumble home than this. And a little bit of tumble home is nice because it lets you get your paddle in a little bit closer, a little bit more efficient stroke, a little better control. But this is just one of the trade-offs of having a canoe that can nest into another canoe. So we can put a little bit of tumble home into my designs, but if you need more tumble home than that, you're probably gonna have to look at a different type of boat. So, you can really just paddle this however you want, wherever you want, just like any other canoe. But if the wind is blowing in the right direction, now you can think about popping up the sail. Now, keep in mind, anytime you pop up a sail in any small boat, you're increasing your chances of going in the water by about tenfold. So if you want a sail, you need to be prepared for whatever might happen if you end up in the water. But assuming that's true, what you can do here 
is grab the halyard, reach down with the other hand, pop that bungee I showed you earlier, and the sail comes up just like that. And then you can either hold the sheet in your hand like this, which is nice because if you get a big gust, you can let it out and it'll keep you from getting pushed into the water. Or if the wind's a little bit more mellow or if you're more experienced, you can cleat it off in one of these little clam cleats here on either side. And I've specially modified both of these clam cleats so they will actually self-release if you get a strong gust of wind, which is just kind of a nice safety feature. And also the attachment point is right here within the sphere of travel of your arm. So if things get too hectic and you need to release the sheet, you can always just hit it like that. It'll pop out, the sail will flag out, the boat will return to level, and you're not gonna tip over. Now, when you're steering with this, you can either steer with your paddle like this, or you can do what I like to do, which is just shift my body weight forward and back. Because one of the cool things about this design here, especially in the shorter lengths, like in my little pack canoes, is that you can change course dramatically just by shifting your weight forward and back in the canoe. And you can also change course running downwind by just letting the sheet out. And if you let it all the way out, the boat's gonna go one way. If you pull it in, it's gonna go the other. It's just a great way to steer without dragging your paddle. And when you're not dragging a paddle or a rudder in the water, you can get substantially more speed even out of this modest sail area right here. So it's just a pretty slick little system. It lets you sail when there's a favorable wind, but otherwise it just folds out of the way where you don't have to deal with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this down here. And you can see the whole thing just pops right back down into the boat. I'm gonna go ahead tie it off here and then of course you want to just roll up your sheet really quick here and tuck it out of the way so it doesn't present an entanglement hazard so that's using this canoe in just standard canoe paddling mode next let's talk about turning this into a little rowboat so we're gonna start out here just like before we've got the sail in the boat we've got the seat mat in the bottom but instead of installing the canoe seat we're gonna put in this outrigger, which is gonna mount directly over the rear set of seat mounting blocks. So I'm just go ahead and line up the holes here and put a bolt through here. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I can just fasten this down with either a little wing nut or a star knob down here. Now, the oars that I've built for this boat are a slightly modified pair of Adirondack guideboat oars. I'm a huge fan of Adirondack guideboat rowing. I've built six of them out of skin on frame. And something that I really wanted from this particular idea was to get something like the Adirondack guideboat rowing experience without the huge amount of work of building an Adirondack guideboat. And I would say, having used this several times now, that I'm pretty close to what I was looking for there. It's not as perfect as rowing an Adirondack guideboat, but it is darn good considering the order of magnitude different of work in building one of these. So these are fixed pin oars right here. If you're someone that prefers round oars so you can feather while you're rowing, you could just as easily build those as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these in here and climb in the boat. And generally I leave the dock by just taking my canoe paddle here and I'll skull myself a little bit to the side and then I can go ahead and put the oars in here and start rowing. All right, so there's one more thing I forgot to put in the boat and that is just this really simple $5 boat cushion and I set that right in the bottom, gets my butt up a little bit higher while I'm rowing. Now, obviously I'm facing the wrong direction right now, but I'm not even gonna bother to turn around and try to pretend like I'm rowing this because I don't actually have enough room to swing the oars in this room here. But this does give me a good opportunity to talk about rowing geometry because there are so many different ways that you can set up a small rowboat. And this is really designed to be a good, convenient, kind of moderate rowing experience that still allows the canoe to be versatile enough to be sailed and to be paddled without having to take out some giant rowing outrigger. Now, are there other ways that you could set this up? Absolutely, you could drop in a full on rigger with like eight or nine foot oars and a sliding seat and go that way if you want to. You could go even more minimalist than this. Personally, I chose this rowing geometry here because keeping things about this wide, 
I know is going to work because this is exactly the same width as rowing an Adirondack guide boat. And so the way that these oars work is the handles overlap a little bit. And if you're not used to that, it can seem a little bit weird at first, but you get comfortable with it really fast. It's just a great way to get a lot of leverage on an oar when you have a narrow boat. Now, the other thing about this that's nice is by not having these outriggers come out too far, it's easy to get in and out of the boat off of a dock or a steep bank, which is something that's really hard if you have a full-on larger style outrigger. I chose to go with pinned oars because they're super convenient. You just drop them in here, they're holding the oar in a vertical position, and it's just like being on rails while you're rowing. Now, the downside to pinned oars is that you can't feather them, which makes them more difficult in rough water and more difficult in heavy wind. But the upside for them is that, especially if you're a sportsman like me and you like to fish or you like to shoot, if you're rowing with a set of pinned oars, you can just drop them, they trail silently next to the boat in the water, you can throw a cast, you can fire a shotgun if you want to, or whatever else you're doing in your boat. Maybe you're doing some photography or something like that. And so there's just an overall convenience factor here that's really nice. But there's one more super cool thing about this style of pinned oar right here, and that is the ability to use it as a steering oar while you're sailing. And the sailing versatility of this rig is something I was totally not expecting, and it's one of the things that I'm the most excited about right now, because you can sail with this setup just the same way as you can in regular canoe mode. So I'm probably not gonna be able to see the sail pop up here, but I'm gonna pop it up anyways, just for illustration. So let's say I'm rowing and the wind is starting to go in the right direction. Well, in that case, I'm gonna start sailing, so. Go ahead and pop my sail. I'm gonna pop it up here. And now, all I have to do is lean back like this. And this rowing outrigger basically becomes an armchair. And I can just reach out like this and I can steer with my steering oar. Now, just like with the canoe paddle, if the wind is really light, I would recommend just actually putting these oars inside the boat and steering with your body weight and steering with sheet because you're going to pick up a little bit more speed. But when the wind is really honking, it is kind of nice to be able to hold on to this and use this as a tiller. And, you know, if you're a little bit on a broad reach, you can even hike out a little bit and hang on to it like that. It's just a really slick way to uh, use this particular rig. So it's not the world's most powerful rowing rig. It's not a sliding outrigger. It doesn't have spoon bladed oars. You could do all that if you want to, but I feel like it's a nicely balanced minimalist rig for this kind of canoe. So one more thing I wanna get into here before I go is just talk about the very last thing that I've been working on, which is some updates to the catamaran system for these boats. Now, using a couple of sticks to hook two canoes together like a catamaran is probably something people have been doing ever since canoes were first invented, but it's not something you really see very often anymore because modern composite canoes are usually not quite strong enough on the gunnels to be able to be hooked together that way without getting damaged when you're going over a wave or over a rapid. And this is really kind of one of the big advantages of skin on frame construction in general because it can be very strong, but also be slightly flexible, which really helps to dissipate those forces. Now, additionally, if you add a bungee into there so you've got a little bit more flex, now you can head over big waves and you can head over rapids and the canoes aren't gonna risk damage. Now, my own personal evolution with this started with just some straight sticks that we put across the top of the gunnels and hooked on with ball bungees. And we went 70 miles down a wilderness trip with rapids. It was a little bit flexy, but it held together just fine. And it was a super fun way to run a river with a less experienced paddler who would not have been able to run a whitewater river solo otherwise. So that's kind of where I started with that. And then I took a sideways diversion when I started putting flat boards underneath the self rescue loops that I started adding to my pack canoes so people could do self rescues just like you can in a kayak. And so that was kind of the next version of the system, which I really liked because it was a lot stiffer. But recently I had a student send me some information on his catamaran boards that kind of combines the flat boards that I've been using on my last system with the ball bungees that I was using on my first system. And I like this because it's a lot simpler, it's a lot easier to attach, it's a lot cheaper to build. It does go back to being a little bit more flexy than I would like, but it does have the advantage of being able to be attached even when you're on the water. So 
I'm just going to show you how this hooks on here because it's really slick. So let's say you want to put the catamaran boards on. This isn't the right location, by the way. I'm just doing this for illustration. I'm just going to go ahead and set it across right here. I'm going to reach down. I'm going to feed the bungee loop behind the rib and then and hook it over the ball bungee just like that. And the whole thing ends up being relatively stiff and you can put this on even if you're out on the water, which means that you could be out canoeing in the middle of a lake, the wind is starting to come up, you could take the catamaran boards out of the bottom of your canoe, you could hook a couple canoes together, and then all you gotta do is sit back, pop up your sails, and you can really honk downwind because you don't have the same stability issues that you would have if you were sailing solo. Now additionally, if you're on a rowing trip and you've got your rowing outriggers set up, it is super nice just to be able to sit back, lean back. You can put one hand on the oar that's between you like this, and you can steer it just like a rudder, and it just works awesome. Now, obviously there's limitations to this. You don't wanna to try to do this in a big open body of water where you've got big waves developing because that's just not appropriate for a small boat like this. But if you're using good judgment and you're paying attention to the conditions, you can really get a pretty good amount of speed out of this system. So that's pretty much it for the work on my nesting canoes and my solo canoes here in 2020. It's been really fun doing more work on these designs here. I'm getting feedback constantly from all the students out there that are building these boats all over the world. We've got a bunch of tandems going right now, so hopefully when I come back to this in 2021, I'm going to be able to give the tandems the thumbs up or the thumbs down, depending on how all of those turn out. But so far, things are working out really well. It's neat to see the system evolve here. Uh, last thing I'm gonna work on before I switch over to working on kayaks for the rest of this year is I'm currently shooting a video course for how to build this outrigger system here and how to build a couple different kinds of really high quality small boat oars. Because the annoying thing about small boat oars is it's just as hard to build a crappy set as it is to build a good set. And most people have to build multiple sets of oars before they can get to some really good ones. So I'm trying to develop a system right now where a beginner could build a super nice, lightweight, durable small boat oar. These particular oars, have a Sitka spruce shaft, so they're nice and light, but then they have ash laminated onto the blades, so they're nice and strong. Just a really sweet, really enjoyable ore to paddle with here. So that's pretty much it for now. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also check us out on our website, which is capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a whole bunch of skin on frame building courses, a ton of free content, including a seven hour long skin on frame kayak prep course, and a free Greenland paddle building course. You can find me on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds where I post a daily blog of everything I'm doing here in the shop, lots of videos and lots of time-lapse videos. And I would highly encourage you to check that out because the YouTube videos like what you're watching right now take a huge amount of time and effort to produce, which means that oftentimes the things that you see me presenting are actually things I was working on months ago. And if you wanna keep track of what we're doing in real time, you can go over to Instagram and you can follow along as I'm actually building these boats. It's a great way to pick up a bunch of skin on frame building tips and tricks that you're not gonna see anywhere else except for inside of my paid courses. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have fun building your skin boat and be safe while you're paddling.